You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. There's a coal mine. We've got about 20 minutes left, but there's a coal miner strike in Alabama. Um, Max, why don't why don't you uh, you know tell us uh, you know tell us what what you've been seeing, what you what what your thoughts are, and and um, yeah. Well, I would uh, I might throw this back to you because uh, for <laughs> listeners, um, you know, when we're talking about uh, what media can do, right? I mean, I am very much. Um, you know, I, 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 I very much preach the good word of, you know, using the media that we have um, to try to kind of, you know, achieve the goals that we want. Right. And and, and to do creative things with media to and, and the, the bare fact is that, you know, we we live in a country uh, where, you know, everything is kind of dominated by capitalism. Right. And the and what I mean by that is that even when we're talking about media, we think like capitalists, right? We think as like our own private firms that are competing in a broad marketplace uh, to succeed. And if someone else is succeeding, it means we're not succeeding, right? That means that we, if we keep following that path, we are less able to do the work that we need to do if we want to use media as an organizing tool or as a tool for rehumanizing ourselves and our fellow workers uh, across the country and beyond. I say that because to to go against the grain there means that we should be collaborating with uh, across media operations like we're doing now and like we did this week on working people, right? I could not be in, in Tuscaloosa County to go to the picket line and talk to the these mine workers who went on strike against Warrior Met Cole, uh, but Jacob could, and, and, our, and our boy Lee Baines could from the Glory mm-hmm. Fires. So we talked to them. We collaborated and we said, hey, Jacob, you got you and Lee go down there, interview some folks um, and we'll run it on working people as a full episode that's guest hosted by you two. And now we've been able to assure with that collaboration that more people know about this important strike. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm exceedingly proud of that. Right. I think we need more of that. And, and it's one of the it, it's the thing that gets me up in the morning. Right. And and so I would toss things back to Jacob because he was the one interviewing these workers, um, you know, on the picket line. But, you know, I guess just to maybe set the table really quick. One of the things that Jacob and I talked about over the phone when he the day before he went to the picket line was the situation at Warrior Met Coal, right? The parent company that was bought out by Warrior Met Coal uh, about five years ago went bankrupt, right? Warrior Met Coal took over not only the open coal mines, but the coal reserve uh, land, uh, the land with coal reserves. This is the kind of coal that is used for making steel in the U.S. and, and Western Europe and stuff. Um, so it's a very important kind of coal for the larger production process uh, across the globe. And anyway, these workers uh, who were working for a bankrupt company were told that they had to tighten their belts. They had to mm-hmm. sacrifice. They had to work together to get the company back in the black. And they did. Workers did what they were asked to do. They did more than they were asked to do. They, they worked their butts off. And in fact, in uh, before the pandemic, in 2019, Warrior Met Coal brought in over $300 million of net profit. And what did they do to repay them, right? They, they, they asked the workers to make more concessions, to sacrifice more so that Warrior Met Coal could keep uh, its, more of its profits and divert more of those profits that the workers made for them to their shareholders and so on and so forth. Just like companies, like GM, General Motors did after the 2008 uh, Great Recession when auto workers, who I remember interviewing back in season one of Working People, they sacrificed, they took concessions, they tightened their belts, and they did what they needed to do to bring the company back in the black. And once they did, what happened, you know, years later? GM uh, issued mass layoffs. They closed plants in place like Lordstown. And then they they took their record profits and they paid back their shareholders at the expense of working people. So we've seen this time and again, and it's unfolding here at Warrior Met Coal and the workers there uh, are, are pushing against it. They went on strike and, and they actually just rejected, uh, the membership just rejected mm-hmm. uh, the tentative agreement that the union the United Mine Workers had struck with uh, Warrior Met Cole. Um, and so the strike continues. And so basically now that's the context. And I know we have limited time, but Jacob, I mean, what were you hearing from these workers uh, when you were talking to them? 
yeah, we are, uh, we're about to come on, on uh, this break, and so I will talk some more about it on the other side uh, of this break. But, but yeah, that's, that's a really good rundown, Max. It's almost like uh, you do your research and you know what you're talking about. So we'll, you're we'll be right back. You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. All right, welcome back. To the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison here with my co-host David Story in the studio, learning the ropes. His future co-host Adam Keller. We've got on the line Dr. Maximilian Alvarez, host of Working People's Podcast and the Real and editor in chief of the Real News Network. Uh, when I said on the other side, it's almost like you do your research. That was a self-deprecating comment in that I am often <laughs> unprepared and go into things blind. David said that did not come across, so I wanted to make clear to you, Max, and to the audience audience that I have he's I mean he's a damn doctor right and I like so he obviously he does his research I am the one who often does not so and that speaking was the, of which I'm gonna call you the next time I got a stomach ache I mean I, I, if you, you know if you, there's some solidarity here I, I, I my doctor's expensive so I'm gonna holler at you David I'll just I'll just uh, warn you I am the living embodiment of that meme where someone is like having a heart attack on the ground and so, and someone's like, is there a doctor here? And a guy goes, I'm a doctor. And they're like, he needs CPR. And I was like, oh, I'm a doctor of history. And, then, and, then, and so like, I will be, I will be about as useful to you as that meme, but give me a call anytime, brother. But, but for all of us uneducated folks out here, a doctor's a doctor's a doctor. We're not going to know the difference. If you'll just start, if you'll tell me to do something, then I'll do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, so we've got 1100 coal miners on strike and, uh, like Max said, I went down there, had some conversation with a bunch of them, and um, it, with Lee. Uh, Lee played some music. Uh, folks will recognize Lee. He he plays the intro for a lot of our uh, in, in, into our segments a lot. Um, obviously not live. They're recordings. We don't have them in a box playing for us. I wish segment. we did. That God, would be what, cool. a, what an amazing person. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. I, lo- I love Lee a lot. And and he he's so cool. But yeah, we went down there and we talked to him. And you know, like with, uh, I'm just going to be able to hit the highlights but the, the my highlight is so my frame of reference, right, is having come from a white conservative evangelical family and that kind of ethos, right? The 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 ethos being that you you go to work, you don't ask nobody for nothing, you um, help folks when they're down, but like folks need to be self sufficient. You need to be self sufficient. You need to work. You need to work hard. You need to provide for yourself, for your family, things like that. And um, and you know, there's just a very cultural kind of conservative work a day normal alabamian right yeah, that's, and that's how a, i grew up let me interject because i think it's important the, to point out that along with those ethos is comes this one thing and this one thing that it, that really defines the difference between us and them mm-hmm. is you don't ask for anything you if you if you work hard enough mm-hmm it will come to you right right you don't Mm -hmm. but but it's 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 almost against your religion to go in and demand more that's i mean that's it we're on like so much the same wavelength because that's what stood out to me in those interviews is that these are like i could have and i said this on the episode i said i could be talking to anybody in my family right now the way that you're talking about like how important hard work is and how important providing for yourself is but like there's a break there exactly like david said is that a lot of it and and you know not um coincidentally the culture is that if you work hard things will just happen you don't have to do anything else you just work hard and things are going to happen and if it doesn't happen it wasn't meant to be okay these folks down there in brookwood they've got exactly the same ethos about i gotta work hard i gotta provide but i know what i'm worth there's the that's the division there Right. That's where that's where there's a there's a fork in the road. They said they said, you know, I know what I'm worth. I'm going down 2000 feet below the earth. I could die any day. I could never come back up. I'm worth a hell of a lot and I ain't getting it. And I'm going to and I'm and I'm going to demand more and I've got a right to demand more. 
and I'm going to stand with my brothers and sisters in this union and on the job, and we're, we're going to walk off the job until we get what we deserve. Um, and, and they were offered a contract that was... So originally in the negotiations, the, like you said, Max, they were asking for even more concessions on top of those huge concessions in 2015. And just to lay those out, I mean, those were huge concessions before they got paid lunch down there. They don't get to come up out of the mines um, uh, while they're working. They have to eat lunch down in the mines. There's not a McDonald's down there. There's not you know some of the some of the places don't even have tables right they've got to eat on the floor in these in these mines and they used to get paid 30 minutes for that which is not a whole lot but they got paid for it now oftentimes they don't before they couldn't be made to work seven days a week now they're often made to work seven days a week 10 hours a day don't get to go to church with their family with their uh with their children with their grandchildren um they uh they don't get very many holidays they took a seven dollar an hour pay cut Seven dollars. I mean, an that hour. alone is insane. That's insane. And the company had the gall to ask for more after, like you said, Max, record-breaking profit, record-breaking production, and millions of dollars in raises for their executives. Disgusting. I mean, evil. Like just evil stuff. So this contract, the tentative agreement that they had, um, was a little bit better. But what was interesting about that to me, David, and and you know, I. Th- I wonder if you picked up on this, is that a lot of times international unions will go out and they'll be like salesmen for the contracts. You know, even when the contracts aren't really that great, but they're wanting everybody to vote for it, and so they're really trying to sell it. That did not happen this time that I saw. Well, I mean, you got to... Like, it it was very much like, here's what we got. Let us know what you want to do. That's the vibe that I got. And so, and they voted it down, and they were like, no, we need more, and we're going to get more. And and so the the membership there voted to stay on strike, and that's what they're doing. And, and, you know, like, if, if, if anybody could take anything away from that episode and from this little bit here, I would highly recommend going and and watching, listening to that. But if anybody could take anything away, away from, from this and, and from that is, is that you can, have that everybody got like most everybody that i know has that that like if i can work i want to work and i want to provide for myself and i want to provide for my family that is not inconsistent with saying i know what i'm worth and i'm gonna fight for it not inconsistent at all yeah and and back to your point about you know the 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 union going out and selling it it's important to point out that that once again you know we say this all the time and we get caught up and 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 a lot of dialogue and forget uh the union did not go negotiate that contract the workers went in and negotiated that contract with the help of some uh paid staff of the union and and when we go in to negotiate a contract we've done information requests for a year prior to that and we know what the company's making we know what their profits are we know where they're going and, and and sometimes you do sell it because sometimes as a negotiating committee you come back and tell the membership we've seen what the profit line is we see the margins mm-hmm. and we don't think it's fair to ask for for any more well this right. is this is really the best we think we can get but in this case as max pointed out that's not the case that is right. you know they looked at it and they said we're getting screwed you're getting screwed and it's time to uh to stand up and fight and so yeah, yeah i mean you know the negotiating committee for all the faults that they have are very well researched and generally uh, fairly educated and understand what they can and can't get out of the company and and hopefully they do the right thing and and in this case they did they steered yeah. steered the workers the way they should be going yeah max we've got uh, just a minute or two left thanks what, so what are, much yeah, for what coming are your closing on max. Thoughts, max i mean really really yeah, we thank appreciate you. it um, I'm, like I said, honored to be here, guys, and I, and I love and appreciate all the work that you have been doing. And since we've got about a minute left, I guess I just wanted to embarrass David and really kind of stress uh, again what a gift this show has been, uh, how amazing it's been to see uh, David, um, a fourth generation Alabama unionist, bring da- uh, bring Jacob kind of like under his wing and to see that dynamic unfold. And now that David's going back to organizing right the show, Uh, with his imprint is going to live on. And I think that it has impacted the rest of us in this kind of labor media, left media, whatever you want to call it, realm. 
And one thing that I wanted to kind of say about that that ties it to everything we're talking about with the miners at Warrior Met Coal is I, when I was driving 14 hours from Baltimore to Bessemer and I crossed the state lines and I made it into Alabama, I was listening to your guys' show on the Amazon uh, Union Drive. I was listening to David talk to Big Mike about things like honor and dignity and humanity. And I hope, if nothing else, anyone listening and anyone involved in media understands, like we're talking about here with this Warrior Met Cole, that you need to address those issues to build solidarity among working people. If you want to see what we're up to throughout the week, get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments and release them throughout the week. We do upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps, so to see if we are on your listening platform of choice, go to thevalleylaborreport.transistor.fm slash subscribe. We've got a website where uh, you can buy our hat, thevalleylaborreport.org. You can also get some... Uh, Uh, stickers there as well and finally if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the valley labor report as you can tell if you are watching the screen uh the the stream we've got uh we we've we've got a messed up monitor so we're gonna uh we're, we're gonna be either having to pay for a repair for that or i mean it's my fault so I'm going to be paying for at least some of it out of my pocket uh, and maybe some out of the show funds. But, you know, have to going to have to repair, pay to repair that or get a new one, which is a bummer. But, you know, anyway, 